let us discuss set theory. So, in set theory we have sets, functions and relations. Okay. So, we start with sets first. Of course, you know we have studied sets in our fifth standard, sixth standard in up to intermediate and engineering also we have studied some sets, right? So, that is why I am not discussing sets, but I want to brush up your, you know, fundamentals in set theory. So, I want to know whether you know, you know, what is belongs to operator and subset are equal to. Sometimes you get confusion between belongs to and subset are equal to and sometimes you do not understand empty set properly. Okay. That is why I gave you some examples here. You try to solve them on your own. Before continuing this video, you know, first try to solve all these problems on your own. These are all true false questions, is not it? So, first solve them and get some answer after that, you know, continue this video. Okay. So, all these videos one by one. Okay. Now, I will see this one first. Empty set equal to this one, true or false. So, empty set is nothing but de according to definition, it is a set which does not contain any element. Okay. So, this is a notation and this is set form. Now, let me write right side thing that is empty set again. Now, the question these two sets equal or not. Okay. Now, obvious right. Now, there is no element here, there is no element here. These two sets are equal, absolutely right. So, answer for this problem is true. Now, come to this one. Empty set belongs to this set. Okay. Now, in this set, I do not see any element. Do you see any element? No, right. Then, how uh, this belongs to operator is all about membership. That means, you are taking one element, this one as element. Okay. So, this is an element. Now, this is set. Whenever I apply belongs to operator between two, uh, you know, left and right, left side uh, thing should be element. Okay. You should treat like element. Right side object you should treat like set. Now, is this element belongs to this set or not? Some students ask this question, but this empty set is a set, right? Yes, it is a set, but you should take that entire set as an element and we should check whether that element belongs to or present here. Okay. Now, let me take this empty set and let me check whether it is present or not. In this set, nothing is present. Then how empty set will be present? And some of the students argue that, sir, we see empty here. Emptiness is different from empty set, right? So, here this set does not contain anything. Okay, There is no element. But if you want to say that answer yes here, this element should present here in the form of element. But there is no element here. That is why this empty set also cannot be present. That is why answer is no. Empty set is not present in the element form. Now, let us come to this one. Is this set equal to this set? So, again I write set form for this one. It is empty set. Is this empty set equal to a set with one element called empty? No. One reason I will tell you. This set has zero elements. This set has one element. What is that? That is a set. What is that set? Empty set. Okay, That is different. So, do not go to that details. But there is one element. But here no element. That is why they are not equal. So, answer is false. Come to this point. Empty set belongs to a set with, you know, an element called empty. We will see. So, whenever there is a belongs to operator, treat this entire thing as an element and check for that element. Like, it is you are searching. Search for this element. Yes, I got it. So, I got this here as an element form. That is why empty set belongs to this set. Absolutely true. Okay. Now, see this one. Empty set subset are equal to empty set. So, this is a new operator called subset are equal to. Whenever we apply subset are equal to, then left side object should be a set, right side object should be set and we have to compare the elements of left side and right side. How to compare I will tell you. So, I am showing you how to apply subset are equal to. There is a left side one set with some elements let us say a comma b, right side some elements let us say c comma d comma e so on. 
whenever subset are equal to is true then all the elements of left side each and everything should present at right side in the set form uh, sorry in element form a should be one of the element here b should be one of the element here then only subset are equal to will be true let's try that so empty set subset are equal to this set right let me write empty set in set form Sub this one subset are equal to this one you see now this is absolutely true the reason whatever the elements you have in this set are present this side so some of the students argue that sir there is nothing here yes but there is nothing here too right there is nothing here there is nothing here but whatever the element you he present here of course there is nothing but whatever present it is present here too understand so you tell me is there any element which is present here but absent here no right that means subset are equal to true subset are equal to is false only in one case there is one element let's say raju let's say that raju is let's say absent here as a element then we say that left side set not subset are equal to right side set now we'll see next one 1 comma 2 belongs to set 1 comma 2 belongs to set 1 comma 2 answer is false not true i will tell you the reason it's a belongs to operator isn't it whenever there is a belongs to operator we have to treat this as element not set right this entire thing is one element now the question is this element is a member of this set okay we first we see the members of this set members of this set are one and one more member is two now is this one comma two set is one is it one no is it two no but the sets members are only one comma two then this kind of member not present again some students get confusion here sir we are seeing one comma two but not in member form right one comma two is not member one is a member two is a member but not this this one is this entire unit is not a member here right this entire unit is a set right but we have to see the members right so that's why this entire unit is not a member let's see next one subset are equal to whenever it's a subset are equal to take every element of the left side and prove that it belongs to right side one belongs to right side okay in right side i can see only one element in the set isn't it this is an element okay now is this one is this no that's why is this two is this one no that means neither one is present here nor two is present that's why subset are equal to is absolutely false right now we'll see this one one comma two belongs to set of set of one comma two membership belongs to then this entire thing is an element we should check whether this element belongs to this set as a member first we see the members of this set there is only one member right see how you know that sir simple this is left parenthesis this is right parenthesis this is the open and this is a close of the set and whatever i write inside they are all elements i have written only one set right that means this entire thing is one element don't say that one is an element two is an element no one comma two are not members of this set they are members of this set that you should understand so finally in this set there is only one member it is starting from here to here of course it is a set it doesn't matter a set can contain another set as a member that's why you know it adds confusion to you now we'll see one is this one belongs to this set this set i'm talking about up you know outer set no is this two belongs to this set no that's why this set is not you know but it's a belongs to operator right this entire thing i'm sorry i did a mistake so we are talking about belongs to right then this entire set is a member now is it belongs to this set yes so what is the member here set 1 comma 2 is the member right now that's why this 1 comma 2 set is a member of this set it's obvious right true okay now we covered the last one we'll see this one set 1 subset are equal to set of set 1 comma set 2 okay subset are equal to take each and every element 
and prove that they are members of this set okay what is here first element is one is it a member here no again students get confusion sir i am seeing one you are not seeing one you are seeing set one so here we have one right so one is not a member of this set it is not this one not this one okay so that's why to say that one is a member add that like this then one is a member then you will be right okay so let me complete it set one subset are equal to set of one comma set one comma set two this is absolutely right the reason see what are the members of left hand side set one each and every element should be right side yes this one is here that's why subset are equal to true so this is about you know belongs to and subset are equal to if you know how to apply belongs to operator and subset are equal to operator then you know you can understand set theory concepts okay let's discuss about functions to understand functions you should understand one more concept that is relations i just give definition of relations after that we you know continue with functions once you learn all the functions again we will come back to relations topic to understand functions you need a definition of relation that's why i'm starting with relation okay so what is relation think about it relation is a mapping okay so you should have a domain and a codomain they are nothing but two sets a comma b and example set a is 1 2 3 this is a b c then relation is a mapping from one set to another set if you map 1 to a and it is not compulsory to map element 1 to a it's up to you you can map 1 to a or 1 to b or 1 to c similarly you can map 2 to a 2 to b 2 to c let me take this name 2 to c and you can map 3 to a or 3 to b or 3 to c let me not choose anything so this is one of the relation so we write this relation in set form so a is a set b is a set and the mapping between a to b is also a set and especially the elements of this set is ordered pairs each ordered pair represent one mapping example you have one to a right then we write one comma a then two to c that's it so these two are number of elements in r so number of edges if you see here they represent number of elements we'll see one more example uh, let me take a b a 1 2 3 as it is let's say b a b c but i don't map anything still it is a mapping okay so that mapping is called empty mapping so that does not contain any element so if any set is empty set that is called empty relation okay empty relation is an empty set so this is the basic definition of relation if you understand that then we can understand you know functions before that i would like to ask one interesting question if you know the number of elements in this set and number of elements in this set then you know you can find out the total number of ways of forming the relations so let me repeat it if you know the number of elements in domain number of elements in codomain then we can find out all possible relations between a to b for that we try to derive the formula now let's take a is some set of a1 comma a2 comma so on am m elements and set b equal to b1 b2 so on bn elements okay then the number of relations possible from a to b will try to form if you observe any relation if you observe any relation you will understand the formula example one relation is a1 a2 a3 so on am right here codomain b1 b2 so on bn whatever the relation you form you are mapping a1 to either b1 or a1 to b2 so on right so what i want to say is first you calculate a cross b i will tell you why so after calculating a cross b we can find out total number of relations from a to b i will tell you what is a cross b a cross b is nothing but 
Cartesian product of A comma B of course, but that is also a relation. And this A cross B relation is nothing but it, it is a mapping from every element of A to every element of B. Let me show one example of A cross B for smaller set rather than these big sets like 1, 2, 3 if you have here and A, B here. Then what is A cross B is map 1 to A, 1 to B, 2 to A, 2 to B, 3 to A, 3 to B. Why I am teaching A cross B? The reason if you understand A cross B then you can find out the total number of relations from A to B easily. We will see that. So the observation if you make here that this A cross B contains every mapping possible, right? See, there is no extra mapping possible other than A cross B in any relation. Understand? Example, if I write this relation, which is, you know, the name of the relation, let's say R A cross B is 1 comma A, 1 comma B and 2 comma A, 2 comma B, 3 comma A, 3 comma B, isn't it? After seeing this uh, relation, you can understand one thing that is no one can form bigger relation than this, yes or no, from A to B especially. From A to B in all the relations, A cross B is the biggest. Now, any relation if you want to form, example try one more relation between A to B, randomly I am trying 1, 2, 3, A, B. 1 to A, let me choose. 1 to B, no. 2 to A, it's entirely random. 2 to A, yes. 3 to B, yes. So if you write set form for this one, it will be 1 comma A, 2 comma A, 3 comma B, isn't it? Now after observing this, then I realize that whatever the relation you form, then the element should come from A cross B, isn't it? because we know that A cross B is the biggest relation possible. Every other relation should be with respect to set theory. This is a set. This is a set. Every relation should be subset are equal to this. Is it not obvious? Yes, that's why now I can define relations easily with this idea. That is any relation from now onwards from A to B is after all subset are equal to A cross B. Okay. Let me make that definition. So that is, if you have a relation, uh, I mean, if you have two sets A comma B, A comma B, then any relation R is definitely subset R equal to A cross B. Okay. Remember, any relation from A to B is subset R equal to A cross B. You remember this point. Now, what I am going to do is, using this definition, I am going to solve a numerical problem that is, the total number of relations possible from A to B. That is what you know our question, right? Let me do that. Let us see numerical problem related to this concept. The number of relations possible from A to B where mod A equal to M, mod B equal to N. First of all, any relation is subset are equal to A cross B, right? That is why let me compute A cross B. So A cross B contains how many elements? M into N, right? So this is point number one. Second, now whatever the relation you form, it should be subset are equal to this set. Now how many subsets possible, you know, number of subsets for a set of some k elements is, we know that 2 to the power of k, that is important point. So, if please go through that combinatorics classes, I taught you the number of subsets for any set is 2 to the power of k. Now, whatever the subset you take, that is one relation, right? You can't do more than that. So, finally, there are 2 to the power of k subsets. Each one is one relation. Then number of relations also should be 2 to the power of k. But here k is number of elements in A cross B. Now, any relation is subset are equal to A cross B. That's why total number of such relations equal to 2 to the power of number of elements in A cross B, which is nothing but Mn, right? So, 2 to the power of M into N. In that way, so you can solve this question. Now, we will come to functions. First of all, I start with function definition. Before that, I would like to give some terminology about functions like, you know, what are the keywords we use in functions. 
first thing is let's say whenever you map a set to another set like a to b then we say we know that this is domain right already i taught you usually this is called domain and this is co-domain okay now and let's say elements of this set is 1 2 3 and here a b c now we know what is relation right it's a mapping but function is also a relation that means it is also a mapping but there are some conditions the conditions are every element of your domain should be mapped definitely but to exactly one element that means you know one should be mapped to exactly one element two also should be mapped to exactly element but you know you can map two elements to same not a issue three is also should be mapped to one element if you do that then you form a function so simple so function is a relation with extra condition that is every element of the domain should be mapped to exactly one element so simple right so this is about you know function definition i am writing the definition of function so a function from a to b is a relation r from a to b okay such that the condition is for every element of the domain is mapped to exactly one element exactly one element so whenever it happens example this is a function in this function we write f of 1 as a so usually we denote you know mapping like this whenever one is mapped to a this is our pictorial representation but usually we use a different notation like this so we use a function name f f of 1 is a whenever one is mapped to a so similarly in this example f of 2 also definitely one element isn't it a so f of 3 is here b isn't it but c is not at all you know mapped by any of the elements so this is about function whenever there is a function so f is defined for every element you see f of 1 is defined f of 2 is defined f of 3 is defined and always you see a single value whereas in relations what can happen is you know one element may be mapped to two multiple elements then f of 2 will become example in this example f of 2 is a comma b but in functions it is not possible only in relations it is possible if i map 2 to a 2 to b that is not a function because the definition is every element should be mapped to exactly one element so simple isn't it now in the exam or somewhere anywhere so they can ask this kind of questions that is uh, one question is given a relation whether it is a function or not second one how many functions possible from set a to set b so we are going to do that two things okay first one is how many functions possible from set a to set b second one you know how to find out whether a relation is function or not okay these two areas i'm going to cover now concept number one the number of functions from set a to set b where mod a equal to m mod b equal to n we'll try to solve this question to solve this question i am going to take one structure that is you know pictorial representation so let me take here all the elements of a they are a1 a2 a3 so on am isn't it now in set b the elements are b1 b2 b3 so on bn so i try to form one function just you know i will try to simulate the forming of function to form a function i have to map this to something right i don't know but definitely i have to map to you know something a2 also should be mapped to something a3 should be mapped to something so on am should be mapped to something if you do that that's it function will be you know formed isn't it now i can see some you know sub task like you know systematic m tasks 1 2 3 4 task number 1 is mapping a1 task number 2 is mapping a2 so on so what i do is i do every task separately and i proved that they are independent 
why they are independent because to whom uh, to whomever you map a1 doesn't matter a2 can be mapped to anything similarly whatever the way you map a2 still a3 has independent options isn't it so according to combinatorics and especially product rule we can multiply the total number of ways right every you know every tasks ways let's do t1 t1 is nothing but mapping a1 that's why let me show you know symbolically as t a1 what is t a1 task t a1 task is mapping a1 to something how many options you have since we have to map to exactly one element we have n elements then anything you can choose depends on the way you choose it will be n ways isn't it so similarly the task a2 also same thing how many ways you can map a2 still n ways in that way every task can be done in n ways right now according to product rule our big task is mapping this mapping this mapping this mapping every element that is what a function right then to form a function is nothing but mapping a1 followed by mapping a2 followed by mapping a3 so on forming uh, mapping am right i'm using combinatorics that's why combinatorics is very important please go through combinatorics videos before coming here okay now the total number of functions equal to according to product rule total number of mappings of a1 into total number of mappings of a2 so on total number of mappings of am okay so each one is n right n into n into how many times m times so that would be n to the power of m that's why the total number of functions from set a to set b is n to the power of m second set size power first set size you should remember it okay so this is one numerical problem second kind of question they ask is you know they give you a relation and they ask whether it is a function or not we'll do that first of all f of x equal to x square take this one is this f of x equal to x square is a function let's check it what is the definition of function first of all it should be a relation let's say it is a relation because it is mapping you know domain to codomain how it is mapping it is mapping x to x square right i can see the mappings that's why it's a relation okay each and every element is mapped to some element x is mapped to x square now such relation is function or not we'll see so since x is mapped to x square then whatever the random number you take that will be mapped to the random number square right then my question is every element you know i can see the map right you take give example 2 2 is map to what 4 let's say 3 3 is mapped to 9 4 16 yeah every element is mapped whenever you take a real number which is domain whatever the number you take if you apply x square that's a single number isn't it and it is always defined real number square is defined that's why whenever you give a real number you get you know r square in image correct so what is image means whenever you map a to b you know we say that b is image of a okay remember it b is image of a now what i want to say is every element of your domain has image for sure isn't it okay is there any element has multiple images no because you are doing this operation x square x into x so x into x is always single element that's why it's a function and do you see any element square does not exist no whatever the real number you take its square is always well defined that's why it exists and because of multiplication property it's always a single number okay so whatever the doubts you have in your mind will be cleared after second example that is f of x equal to root under x let's me let me show it f of x equal to root under x is it a function we'll see in this function or in this relation x is mapped to root under x ask yourself one question what is the definition of function in a definition of function every element should be mapped to exactly one element that is what we have to prove and your domain is real numbers right if you take any real number in this you know this mapping is doing like this r is mapping to root under r now my question is 
is this root under r is always a single number no isn't it example 4 4 would be mapped to root under 4 but root under 4 is not a single number right root under 4 is plus 2 comma minus 2 that means what in your relation this relation 4 is mapped to root 2 sorry plus 2 and 4 is mapped to minus 2 that is againest function definition isn't it one more problem negative number if you take negative number then that will be mapped to root under negative number but root under negative number is not a real number it is imaginary number isn't it root under minus 1 root under any negative number is imaginary number which, which is a complex number isn't it but codomain is real numbers finally there are two reasons one is some elements have multiple images and second one some elements have no image that's why this is not at all a function okay but i don't require these many evidences one evidence is enough so this is not compulsory already i'm seeing one you know evidence to say that it is not a function but you know for sake of completeness i am showing you all the evidences okay yes this is about you know function definition and number of functions and how to check whether a relation is function or not okay we can classify functions into three parts like one to one functions on to functions and one to one correspondence they are not mutually exclusive okay that means you know some functions are which are one to one but at the same time on to there are some functions which are on to at the same time one to one in that way so, so they are not mutually exclusive this classification okay now we'll see one by one what kind of functions are called one to one functions okay let's begin with one to one function also known as injection first of all that should be a function let's say example i have a function a to b that is called one to one function if it satisfies this condition i'm going to tell you that condition you have domain and codomain and example 1 2 3 a b c the condition is every element should be mapped to different element usually in function every element should be mapped to exactly one element right apart from that if every element is mapped to a different image like 1 is mapped to a 2 is mapped to b 3 is mapped to c so this is called one to one function one more example let's say 1 2 3 a b c d e let's say one is mapped to a two is mapped to let's say b three is mapped to e this is a one to one function very simple every element should be mapped to different image that's it so that is called one to one function okay every function need not be one to one function isn't it example if three is mapped to b instead of e then this is a function but not a one to one function okay now we will see how to find out you know whether given a function is one to one or not second one how many one to one functions possible from set a to set b these two kinds of questions you know usually they ask if you you know understand these two concepts then that is enough about one to one functions first one is how many functions actually possible which are one to one functions okay we will see that concept the question is number of one to one functions one to one functions from you know a to b where mod a is given as m mod b is given as n we'll try to solve it so did you remember how i solved you know number of functions question in the same way we solve this question okay so first for that we take a pictorial representation so you know i'll have well structure like once i have a structure then it will be easy for me to solve a problem the structure of any function is like this if you have m elements here a1 a2 a3 so on am here b1 b2 so on bn okay now think about one to one function any one to one function is very simply a1 should get mapped to a different element a2 should get mapped to a different element a3 should get mapped to different element so what i do is i use same task sequence okay t a1 first how many different ways you can map a1 if usually it is a function what was the answer 
you a1 can be mapped to b1 or b2 or anything n options right since only one element to be mapped then answer is n how many ways a2 can be mapped in functions again a2 can be mapped in n ways because a1 and a2 can get same kind of image but that's not possible here right so here a2 should be mapped to a different image than a1 since a1 is already mapped okay in the task sequence i'm mapping like this map a1 then map a2 then map a3 so on map a n this is the task sequence i am following then you know in the early man, uh, morning i am doing this one in the early morning if i do t a1 then how many ways i can do it how many ways you can map a1 n ways but t a2 you are doing after doing t a1 then how many options a2 has think about it one option definitely will be cancelled by a1 right so if you do a2 then you will realize that there are only n minus 1 options not n because you can't take the same option as a1 so it will be n minus 1 so t a3 will be how many ways you can map a3 you can't take images of a1 and a2 which are 2 then if you remove them it will be n minus 2 in that way now the total number of ways of forming function equal to mod t a1 that means mapping a1 into total number of ways of mapping a2 so on total number of ways of mapping a n that would be n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 you can easily guess the last position see this is m okay please correct it it is a m t a 1 into t a 2 into so on t a m it is n into n minus 1 n minus 2 so on this a m is the mth job right mth task first task can be done in n minus 0 ways second task can be do, done in n minus 1 ways third n minus 2 fourth n minus 3 mth task can be done in n minus m minus 1 isn't it so that's why this will become n minus m minus 1 so we have seen this sequence isn't it n into n minus 1 n minus 2 so on n minus m minus 1 is npm template number 2 it seems our template number one I don't remember but it is NPM okay one of the template you know matches to the sequence NPM right from now onwards you remember the total number of functions from set A to set B which are 1 to 1 are NPM not n to the power of M so total number of functions are n to the power of M and number of 1 to 1 functions are NPM understand